Margie Taylor Greene may have the most outsized influence of the most extreme MAGA wingers in Congress, thanks to Kevin McCarthy selling his soul to her to become speaker. But she's really just one of the loudest of the dregs of the right-wing extremists in the Republican caucus. There's gun-toting Lauren Boebert, pew, pew, who this week signed on to a brief asking the Supreme Court to ban the abortion medication Mifepristone. And Paul Gosar, who's gone from sharing cartoons of himself killing Democrats to more recently linking to Holocaust denial and anti-Semitic content on his House newsletter just this week. A newly formed PAC is taking them on, along with some of the other worst of the worst MAGA Republicans. The bipartisan Mission Democracy PAC aims to stop the far-right MAGA members of Congress back in their home districts, making clear in their first new ad that Margie is just the avatar of the extremists. Roe v. Wade has been overturned. And our government is held hostage by a band of politicians so extreme that only the word fascist describes them. Extremists are taking over America. It's not just Marjorie Taylor Greene. It's the entire Green team. We all thought they were just a bunch of crazies. They are here. They are elected. They wield power. Joining me now for their first TV interview are three founders of Mission Democracy PAC. Uh, Chairman Marcus Flowers, who ran against Marjorie Taylor Greene last year. Olivia Troy, Chief Operating Officer of the PAC and former advisor to Mike Pence. And former Republican Congressman Denver Riggleman, who is a member of the PAC's board. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for having, Thanks, us. for having us. I feel like I should go to you first because you did you 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 took the heat of trying to run against that woman. Um, and so I guess the question I guess to ask all of you is: Is it even possible to dislodge people like Marjorie Taylor Greene when people who've seen her? They know she's an internet troll. They know she follows teenage shooting victims around in Capitol Hill, and that she's not wrapped too tight. And they still voted for her. Is it even possible to dislodge someone like her? Well, Joy, you tried. Yeah. I tried, didn't get the outcome that I wanted, but what's the alternative? Throwing our hands up and not doing anything? Allowing fascism to take hold in our country? We can't do that. Yeah. We have to try. We have to bring this fight and educate people in those districts about the dangers of the radicalization that people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and her fascist Green Team lineup are pushing all over our country. So, so my question is, 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 how do you do it? I'll start with you, Olivia. I mean, you're, you're not just dealing with Marjorie Green and her online fans. You're also dealing with Fox. We just had this, a young man named Clinton Ludwig. He's the grandson of the man who shot this young man, Ralph, this little boy, Ralph Yarl, in the face and in the head, I mean, and, and then shot him again. This is what he said about how his grandfather got radicalized. Take a quick listen. I feel like a lot of people of that generation are caught up in this uh, 24-hour news cycle of fear and, and paranoia perpetuated by some other news stations. And he was fully into that, sit and watch uh, Fox News all day, every day, blaring in his living room. And I think that stuff really kind of reinforces this negative view of, of minority groups and leads people to be a little, it doesn't necessarily lead people to be racist, but it reinforces and galvanizes racist people. Olivia, you were Homeland Security, uh, you know, you were in Homeland Security Department. You were in charge of things like counterterrorism. This is radicalization that is taking place from Fox News, from a lot of these online sites. How do you fight that when you have people so radicalized that they would shoot a child at their door? Yeah, well, no, that's absolutely it. I, that's why this is so dangerous. That is why these people that are elected officials, the leaders of the Republican Party that are sitting out there, their words matter. And so they're working together with Fox News. It's one big machine. And I think that's why it's important to really reach out at the local level into these communities where it's happening, because it's actually reaching those viewers, reaching those voters and having a conversation about why this matters, why it's important, what it means. Right. What does it mean when you start to undermine law enforcement, the courts? What does it mean when you start to ban books? Because it doesn't stop there. All right. And so I think our point is, look, we we, we call the ad the black shirt ad. Mm -hmm because it's a reference to what happened with Benito Mussolini and the yep. squads. They came to power, fascists came to power via election at the beginning. We're watching this happen right now. And so in terms of disinformation, and Denver and I talk about this all the time, it's our passion. We talk about how do you counter, how do you permeate into those circles? And, and look, to Marcus's credit, grateful that people are willing to take a stand and take these people on. Yeah. Republicans do that. Yeah. They don't take breaks. They don't care that they might lose in that district. They are out there pounding the pavement every single day 
together with Fox News. Yeah. We know that. I watched the Trump administration do it internally. Yeah. Texting, you know. That whole thing, we saw how that played out. How that play, it played on January 6th. And, you know, Denver, you were involved in, in that investigation. Because you have such a radicalized base in the party that is so loud, I think it's tempting for people that are in the Democratic side to say, well, that's all, there, there are no Republicans who aren't like that. And that even Republican leading independents are impenetrable because they're just zooming in on Fox News and watching it all the time. Is there a pragmatic argument that gets, that can put something between them? and the radicalization? Is there some sort of, because policy arguments don't seem to work. Not really, and I think, I think what you're looking here, you have three people with a unique set of skills, right? We're all from intelligence backgrounds, we're really not politicians. Yeah. But I think what you're looking at, when you're looking at Olivia Marcus and myself, we have a very specific mission, right? And that mission is only a few right now. We're not looking at everything across the spectrum. Sure. Because there are Republicans out there, right, that are common sense, yeah. they're facts-based, right, and they want the right thing for the country. And what you have here, when Olivia and Marcus reached out to me, you know, I said, there's only one criteria. And that's that the people that we're supporting are sane. <laughs> that's that would it, right? be nice. So Pretty basic. It's fa right? It's, 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 facts over, nice. it's facts over fantasy, right? Yeah. And so really, what since we are intelligence professionals, since we did this, we came up with a way to describe this. And we, you know, when we were in the military, we had something called a prioritized integrated target list or a piddle, right? We have a prioritized integrated candidate list or a pickle, right? So our issue here is that we need to have the right pickle here. We have yeah. to put it together, right, in order to go after these individuals in a way that takes research data mm -hmm. with very pointed ads that actually right. hits them in their weaknesses, yeah. right? And that's something that we're all very good at. And I think, listen, we're fighting in the seams. I know we're fighting in the 3 to 5% seam area, but my goodness, I would not rather fight this with anybody, right, than, than, than Olivia and Marcus right now because they're sane. And I think it does matter that you all have intelligence and military backgrounds, because this is sort of almost a project of dealing with an insurgency, okay. right? We're dealing with an insurgency inside of our own country.